Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu and I've got another video for you today. We're going to talk about some uh, guard passes. I've had a lot of requests for people asking about guard passes. I have another video on some like uh, uh, no rules or like MMA kind of rules, maybe uh, uh, guard passes. But this one's going to be a little more basic. Some of the, the most fundamental guard passes I feel like this, these will apply gi and no gi to some extent. There are other options that we could use if we had the gi, but I'm doing these all no gi today and we'll see how they translate. Um, the first basic one that I teach people to go over kind of fundamental principles of guard passing is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna block here, wrist to biceps. I'm not gonna go hands to biceps, wrist to biceps like this. Curling the fingers over, elbows drop down. My head is down, my posture is down. I'm gonna post a foot out like this here. I'm gonna put the hand on the hip and use my elbow to pry, to wedge here. I'm gonna go pin the leg down and then I'm gonna take this arm here and scoop it underneath his head. I'm gonna assume that this leg is gonna be up on me. If it's not, I'll just step over. But from here, I wanna get this connection like I was already in side control. I'm gonna pin here, there's a lot of pressure walk the foot up, swim back here this way. If he's flexible enough, I'll connect the hands here, but if not, I'll just cradle. I'll back step here, hips open, and then when I retract the leg last, I'll push everything away off to this side so there's no chance of him really coming back and replacing his guard right away. The uh, second one here is maybe if I've regained my posture, I've gotten my posture like this. If we had the gi, I would grab material. If that's not allowed because of the rule set or whatever, then I'm just gonna go palm, this part of my palm here, bent arm, tricep to lat, into his diaphragm like that. This one's gonna monitor his hip. From here, I'm gonna put this knee, the same side, if I have my right hand forward, my right knee goes in the middle of his butt here like this. I open this leg back and then I sit back. I might need to go both hands on the hips to keep his hips pushed down. Split the legs open that way. And then I'm gonna put the shin up here. I like to kind of come here, not to be rude or anything, but I want to rest my shin right on his groin here. So he kind of tends to dish his hips out of the way. If he dishes his hips this way, which is common, then I'm going to drive this leg over. This one's going to post and step out. And then I'm going to dive for the underhook on this side here during that. I want to scoop this arm up out of the way here, posting. I like to keep this foot here a little bit long until I make sure that I'm clear and, and no chance of him uh, regarding on me. Sometimes if I've got the posture broken down, he's doing a good job of keeping me down and I, he's just not wanting, uh, I'm not able to split his guard open manually, forcefully, then um, I'll kind of like entice him or influence him to open his guard for me by bringing both my knees together behind his butt uh, so that he feels like my base is wobbly, so maybe he wants to open his guard and then maybe try to dish out or sweep me. So whenever I'm here and I bring these knees together, then he starts to open his guard for me, I'm gonna reach back when I feel the legs open and I'm gonna pin this one inside and stuff his leg. Once he stuffs that leg here, and I keep this nice and suffocated. Now I'm gonna bring my other knee here and put it also in front. So I'm gonna wind up with his shin across here, both legs, smashing all this in with a lot of pressure here so that he gets kind of like restless leg syndrome and then he wants to dish his hip out to get that away. And once he does, I'll push that out of the way and I'm clear. So the idea is I'm here this way, right? I put the knees in, he drops. I pin one leg here, then I put the other leg in front of it. I open, keep the hips in tight. Whenever I feel him start to, to get restless and dive his heads, uh, hips out that way, I push heels to the ground, butt up in the air, push the leg across, step the cross knee over, and then I'm passed. These are some good kind of fundamental um, guard passes from a seated position. Um, however, if I feel the guy is uh, tempted to open his guard or play a more open guard game, I feel a little more inclined personally a lot of the time to stand passing. So I tend to prefer pa standing passes. Um, so we'll look at a couple of the fundamental ones here that are good for standing passing. If somehow we've gotten to the standing passing position, I don't want his feet to be in front of me here. He would like for me to see the bottom of his feet so he has more control in front of me like that. What I want to do from here, we'll first look at well, a knee cut, which is a really popular pass. Uh, for good reason, it's very effective. I'm gonna step over, tuck his leg underneath mine like this. I'm gonna post my hand here on his hip. I'm gonna push this leg down as I cut the knee across. Now for this one, rather than being real technical about pinning, stopping, step, 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 I'm just gonna kinda cut through and dive like I slipped and fell on something. So I go here and I slide through like this. I get the underhook on the way down. Again, I can pull the arm up this way, go to scarf hold or side control. So one more time on this one because it's kinda quick. I step here, hand on the hip, hand on the knee. Right? I may pull the knee this way first just to kind of get his hips uh, re-centered. And then I'm gonna cut the knee across, step this foot out here, slide in, get my underhook on the way, scoop here up on the arm so I clear the pass. Right? What I may elect to do from here, if I, especially if I feel like 
this leg is giving me some trouble or he's a little uh, wily with that leg is a Toriano pass or the Toriano pass, whatever you want to call it. It's a bullfighter pass. A variation of it, there's lots of different ways to do it. What I would like to do is take this C clamp here of my leg, start or on my hand on his leg so that it can curve like this. Whenever I do that, hand on the hip, leg between mine. I'm going to kick this foot not back, but up. I want to think up on my leg here. As I kick it back and up, I push the leg out of the way. Here, this way, step, and then I'm here in this knee on belly kind of position. So, again, from here, look, I control the feet like this. This one's between my legs. Hand goes to the hip. My other hand starts here to push first this way, then turn, kick out of the way, and then I'm here in this position. Okay? Okay. So, another one that we're going to look at from here is if I'm disconnected and I'm approaching the legs, then I want to do a leg drive. The leg drive is a very popular one. Again, it works gi and no gi, but if I'm going to do it no gi, I'm going to monitor this leg here pushing and this leg here pushing too. So once I get this kind of pushed here and I feel some resistance on his legs, when I feel that resistance, I'm going to pass like this. I'm handing this ankle off to this hand here. I want to guard on this leg and I'm driving my knee all the way across to staple in like that. What I like to do to secure this position after this is I'm going to try to come in here and if I can, I'm going to hug head and arm together. So now I have his hips and shoulders out of alignment. It's a very important principle in Jiu Jitsu to keep a, him out of alignment like that so he loses structural strength. So again, if I'm here, I'm pushing the legs into him like this. When I feel resistance, I pass the leg across my body. My knee's gonna drive to the floor, here like this, and then I'm gonna go head and arm like this to pin him down. Essentially, we'll look at what, uh, three fundamental kind of passes uh, from seated position and three from standing position. You'll have to kind of develop your own sensitivity and awareness of when you would uh, elect to do one of those based on how you can get your posture or how he's keeping your posture broken down. Uh, so some of the core um, elements of guard passing, we always want to kind of think, how can I get his hips and shoulders out of alignment? How can I manipulate the alignment of his body? That's going to reduce a lot of his structural strength during these passes and a lot of his ability to re-guard on me. Hope you like these guard passes. Hope these are helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thank you, Justin. Thank Appreciate you, it, brother. And keep watching Night Jiu-Jitsu and Aperture, guys.